Good morning, folks. We've got a test of your mental acuity under duress in a real-world application. We've also got a possible sign of localized trouble in the upcoming scarier stages of Earth's magnetic excursion when you see the sign above your heads. Let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours was mostly quiet. Corona hole turning through on the north. Small pop near its southern boundary last night. No CME, but a little filament tried to jump up and touch the stars. It slid back down along its launch pathway. The solar wind is calming back. You can see the entire stream impact here. Purple line, top left, shows the rise and fall of the solar wind speed. Small reverberations of the stream and its geomagnetic effects are expected. Quick look ahead to the West Pacific. This typhoon is heading north at the islands south of Japan. We're going to have eyes on this one the next few days as it charges towards populated areas. Let's test our rapid application under duress, starting with the high and low pressure cells. Every low in the north spins like this, counterclockwise sucking in. In the southern hemisphere, they still suck in, but they go the other way, clockwise. The high pressure in the north always pushes out clockwise, and the same opposite pattern goes for the south, pushing out counterclockwise. But have you ever wondered, looking at these spirals of wind motion at surface level. Where is this air and wind coming from in the high to be pushing out so uniformly? It's not manifesting out of nothing and a different dimension in the center there. And in the low, where's the air going? Certainly not to another dimension. We know that low pressure is the lowest density, so if all the air is going there, where's it going? The answer to both questions is up above. The atmospheric vertical columns of these cells spin in this way as well, moving up or down depending on the cell itself. With vapor, oxygen, and dust following electromagnetic pathways, keep these spiral concepts in mind. We are off to M83, a gorgeous spiral galaxy, pretty much a model for our image of the Milky Way, just a bit light in the arm department. Today, we're seeing a new side of the galaxy, the hot gas dispersion in the arm versus inter-arm regions, the magnetic fields involved in ultimately controlling and characterizing those spiral arms. Paper is open source at the link below. Up next, we mentioned the great Andromeda Galaxy Halo story two days ago, but there was one detail I didn't want to jam in with the big aspects of the cosmological importance. The innermost shells of the region, which we discussed back on the 28th morning show. It's also dynamically dissimilar to the outer CGM. Their explanation points to the extended dynamical system beyond the visible stellar disk, which is being recognized more and more by the week and which further excludes the need for dark matter to explain the galactic rotation. We're on towards home with two quick stops at our planetary shield. The first concerns the magnetosphere, magnetosheath, and the energetic interactions between them. Most models go large scale, but they are now able to detect and characterize small scale events, and they were blown away. Hundreds to thousands of small-scale jets impact this upper region, and that's offering a completely different scale of space weather interaction with our planet. Last but not least, we're coming to an unusual aurora, an unusual event, and one that if you see above you at mid or low latitude, it may be time for concern. During a mere shift to the solar interplanetary magnetic field connection to Earth, the local field breached, compressed, and allowed charged particles to blast the ionosphere and create a spiral auroral pattern. I wonder what could be happening with the energy here to form such a pattern, and since aurora flow within their curtain lines, where's all that plasma going in the center? I also wonder why this amazing eddy appeared in the wake of Hurricane Laura. No, not really. One hopes you can put it together what this means for the ionosphere, magnetosphere, and global electric circuit if you were to happen to see this above your heads. Today, it means very little, but as the magnetic field continues to weaken and you meander to lower latitudes, this sight could become quite concerning. Interesting things to discuss in the comment section there today. Two days until you can get our textbook again, which covers all of what happens down here when the sun sneaks its influence in. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.